All right, uh, we're ready for part two, where I'm going to rewrite the JavaScript, talk about efficiency, optimization, why I did what I did, and kind of go into some details of this parallax effect. Um, so this is where we kind of started before. We had text, we had images. There's no parallax effect. Uh, all the HTML and CSS is here from before, so go watch that tutorial if you didn't see me make that. Um, we're going to redo the JavaScript, OK? So let's get started with our jQuery function. Again, and this time I'm going to write it correctly. I'm going to try and make less mistakes this time. Last time I made a bunch of mistakes. Okay, so we're going to try and answer a few questions today. And let me give myself some more space. Okay, so we're going to try and answer a couple questions. A um, couple questions. First question is going to be uh, why did I use var render equals function, right? We're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to look at why a for loop, right? Another question we're going to have is. Um, request anim animation frame cross browser. Right, talk about that. This is gonna, this version we're going to make is going to work in most browsers. Uh, we're going to look at um, uh, cross browser CSS animations as well. And then lastly, um, why not margin top? Right? Why use the animation at all? So let's get started with answering these questions. First, let's let's start our variables just like we did before. So var container equals parallax just like before. Var divs equals and we're just gonna grab our container dot find div dot parallax dash background. And then I put that, which is gonna be a problem. And then Now, just like we had before, we want to have a reference to the thing that's being scrolled. In our case, it's the body is going to be being scrolled. Um, so I was going to say thing being scrolled equals document.body. Now we're going to have the height of our li, which is going to be li height. So we're just going to grab the first, we're going to grab divs.eq0, so the first div.closest li. Dot height. So we're just going to grab the first one, that's fine. And then var diff height, we talked about last time, but that's the height difference between the background, which is bigger, and the li, which is smaller, right? Because it's a window, the window is smaller than the background. If you look out of your window, the earth is bigger than your window. And that's the difference in size we're going to calculate. To do that, we're just going to grab uh, the divs.eq0, which is the height of the div, which is the inside part. Uh, and that's going to be dot height minus uh, li height. And there you go, that's that. So now um, we're going to define a bunch of variables. So I'm going to define them all here, so I don't have to do it above. li div, I need that. li offset scroll top transform. Okay. This is just, I'm, so while we're talking about optimization, we talked about last time about using the word var in a bunch of places. We're going to have a for loop in a second, and you don't want to use the word var in your for loop because that tells the browser to start scoping, which is slow. Again, we want as fast as possible. Why is that? Why do we want fast as possible? If you are doing, par parallax can be intensive. A lot of things are moving at once on the scroll. So every every frame, 60 frames per second. So that's a, if you do things incorrectly with JavaScript at this point during an animation loop, your whole web experience is going to be just crappy. So it's really important when we do things on an animation basis that we do them as fast as we possibly can allow for. So now that we've done that, um, let's write our render. So I could do function render. I could have done that. But I don't want to do this because this makes the render function available in this, well, it makes the render function available in the entire scope, right? And we want it to cache the function to a variable since we're going to be calling the render function every frame per second. And right now, the, brow the, the JavaScript engine is going to cache the, the render function. So let me actually put in um, our render loop from last time, which is down here. Okay, so there's our render loop. So this is going to call this render function. When it looks for this render function, it's going to have to go into the, the cache of functions that this was written in and then grab this reference and use it. It's actually faster to store the reference locally in this scope yourself. So var render equals function. It's faster to have it stored as a variable so you can refer to it here over and over and over again. Whoops. 
don't forget this is running at 60 frames per second, 60 frames per second, 60 frames per second. And actually, um, yes, 60 frames per second. Because this is running at 60 frames per second, it's calling this loop, calling this loop, calling this loop, calling it over again, and calling render. So by storing render as a variable here, uh, it's just a little bit easier for the JavaScript engine to continuously call this function. Okay, that's the first optimization. So that's our first question answered, right? So answer. Now we're going to do a for loop. Well, why didn't we just do divs.each and just, you know, do jQuery and do that? Well, here's why we didn't do that. I'm going to pull up a JSPerf here. A JSPerf is a really cool tool to test JavaScript out. Uh, so here's a test that I just ran a little bit ago. You can go run this yourself if you want. This is jQuery's each loop. Here's the for loop that we actually do. Here's the for loop without caching the length. What I mean by caching the length is if you remember when we wrote the for loop, we used this comma here. We said var i equals zero, comma length equals a dot length, and then we did the second part. This is all one part. It's caching the length. Instead of like this, we're actually referencing the length as you loop. Okay? So imagine what happens is this this is the setup. This runs once. This runs every single iteration because it has to check whether i is less than this so you're actually doing i less than and you're actually calling a property on an object right that's slower than just checking two numbers and then you have i plus plus so these two parts sorry the this part and this part happen over and over and over again this part does not so it's faster to cache your stuff up here like this okay then we've got a for in loop and then we've got a reverse for loop. If you look at which one's faster, you can see that jQuery's each loop is very slow compared to using a for loop. So in all possible cases, you should always, always opt for a for loop instead of an each loop. If your performance is a one-time kind of thing, each loop is more convenient, go ahead and use it. In our case, our for loop is going to be running inside of an animation. And again, we need as fast as possible. So we're going to go with this version. So let's write that out. So instead of doing divs each, we're going to say for. We don't need to use the word var because we already defined it up here, again, because it's faster. So i equals 0. And then comma, you can define JavaScript variables with a comma. So i equals 0. And now we're going to define length, right? And we're going to define it right here because we're still in our first section of our for loop. This stuff only happens once. Okay? So length equals. Um, and actually, and actually, now that I think about it, an even better optimization that I, I just now kind of thought of is that the length of our divs uh, is not changing. We actually don't, because this, this is actually hitting every iteration of a render loop. We actually don't need to do that. We can actually store the length out here. So let's just do that, var length equals divs.length. So that actually is oh, that's awesome, better optimization. So we don't even need to do that. Forget that part. i equals 0, i less than length, and then i plus plus even better love it so for loop because it's faster now now that we have our for loop running we need we still need a reference to the current iteration you know with jQuery it's easy you just write this and that that's what it is but since we're not using jQuery the reference is actually going to be our array which is divs and then uh, and then I so this is a jQuery object, but when you access a single element in it, it becomes the DOM object, and that's great. So this is going to be div equals divs i. This is now the DOM object, not a jQuery object. So this is going to be get the DOM object. So now, now we just it's as if we had defined this in jQuery, except now we're a lot faster. So the next step is calculating the offset. So this kind of this whole process kind of works by and I wonder if my diagram is still here from yesterday. Sweet it is. So by calculating this offset, what we did last time is we actually used jQuery's offset method because it's faster. However, upon looking into the offset, it became relevant. It became obvious to me that what offset is actually doing from this perf example is that it's actually looping through the DOM, going all the way up and adding up all of the offsets until you get to the top. That's the only way to calculate the offset. Now again, the offset is this particular position on the page. So the only way to calculate this position is to loop through all of the elements all the way up and add them all up. And that's slow. Anytime you're crawling the DOM, it's slow. It's just always slow to crawl the DOM. So what we decided to do 
instead of doing that, because we were doing that inside the for loop, inside the render loop, every frame per second. That's just terrible. So instead, what we're going to do is create a offsets array, okay, an offsets array of your initial positions. And then, now that we'll have our initial positions, so we're going to just cache where this is when you start, we can subtract our current scroll position, this right here, by this and be able to calculate the same number without actually having to do the offset. So let's do that. I'm going to do it two different ways. The first way I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it outside of here. We can cache all this ahead of time. So we're going to say cache initial, initial offsets. So we're going to say var offsets equals array. And we're going to say, um, we're going to loop through our divs. We can use a jQuery each loop here because this only ever happens once, one time only. And so we just want the convenience now. This doesn't happen over and over again. doesn't matter. So we're going to say each. So now we're going to loop through our divs. And then we're just going to say um, offsets. And then we actually want to store, um, uh, do we want to be in order? So we're going to use the i. So offsets i. And that's going to be like the index because we're going to need to refer to them down here, right? So i. And that's going to be equal to this dot offset. And again, this is using the jQuery offset, right? But that's okay. It only this only happens once. Don't forget. So it's okay to do this slowly. It doesn't matter. It's just once. It's what's ever happening in here that has to be fast. There's a really cool way to actually do this. What I just wrote that uh, Ross came up with. I'm going to show you that now. It's going to be var offsets equals divs dot get, which is the regular array. This is a jQuery collection. This is a regular array. And now we're going to dot map, oops, dot map a function of div and then d. And we're going to actually just return, uh, I believe it's this. Uh, no, it's the first iteration, div dot offset. This does the exact same thing, and it's way cooler. And it's actually faster. So what is this doing? This is the jQuery collection. This is the array of those divs. Now we're going to call map on that array, which means it's, it's going to call this function against every piece of the array and then return the result of those pieces together. So what, what are we doing? We're returning the div.offset. So this is just going to return us an array of offsets. Again, the exact same thing this is doing. This is just cooler and quicker. So we're going to just use this map method. So now we have an array of offsets. So down here, we're going to say offset equals and again, like I said, we're just going to take the top and subtract it by our offset. So top minus, and we need to get our offset, so offsets. Now we need to figure out which div we're on, and that's going to be the i right here, right? So again, looping through here, we have this is going through in order, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this is in order, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we can safely say offsets i is the correct div that we're in our iteration dot top. So now we have our our offset and we didn't have to do any extra looping. That's the, that's the nice part. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get our, our scroll again, our, our, um, our transform string. So this is going to be scroll equals and we remember we had math dot uh, round before and that's going to be offset. The equation has changed a little bit. li height times diff height. So the equation is simpler now. It makes a lot more sense. We're actually taking the diff, basically the, the uh, where we are on the page divided by the height of the container times the difference in our background versus our window. So the scroll amount, basically, this is the fudge amount, like the amount you actually can move up and down. And that's the equation. However, math.round is also slow. We're actually going to use a double tilde to do the same thing as math.floor, actually. And you're probably like, what the hell is that? That's a bitwise operator, and I'm going to show you with this JSPerf how much faster it is. So this actually says that this is the fastest um, using the bitwise arrow arrow zero. I'm not going to explain bitwise to you, but you can look it up if you want. Um, it's, it's barely faster, though, than the tilde tilde, which I actually prefer to use. And if you look at the graphs, tilde tilde actually comes out um, ahead a lot of the time. But math.floor is very slow. Math.round is extraordinarily slow. Parse int is just bad. So you can see these native methods, not good. 
Bitwise, way better. Much faster. We need speed. So, that's a scroll. And the reason, again, that we're doing this at all is because we don't want to have decimals. Using a division and multiplication problem, we're going to have decimals. We don't want decimals. It, it makes it hard for rendering. When you're rendering pixels to the page, if it has to do sub-pixel rendering, uh, it's a lot more work. The last thing we're going to do is, is write our transform string, which you've seen before, so I'm not going to um, put too much effort into that. And then the last thing is, for cross-browser compatibility, um, we're going to do, and actually we'll do cross browser in a minute. So div.style, this is just like before, dot webkit. And actually, one thing you could do is you could wrap jQuery around div and say that CSS transform. You could do this. But again, this is, you, this is having to call jQuery and then having to call a method on jQuery. You could avoid all of that by just literally calling this right here webkit transform equals transform. Okay? That's apply just like that and that is our new code so we talked about the for loop already awesome uh, we didn't talk about that yet and we didn't talk about these yet okay so let's talk about those in a second let's make sure we're on the right track okay so it looks like we never actually defined top uh, which could be a huge problem we could define top inside of our for loop but top doesn't change through the for loop it only changes every frame so we're gonna define it up here so we're just to say top equals thing being scrolled uh, dot scroll top so that's that's the in our diagram that's this right here we actually didn't define that so now that we have our top defined now if we refresh you can see now we've got our parallax effect again and this time um, it's it's pretty damn efficient uh, which is great so let's talk about some of the efficiency things we can do better first of all let's talk about cross com cross browser compatibility this only works in browsers that support this Using this, um, really, I thought I had it open. Uh, Paul Irish, using Paul Irish's request animation frame thingy, this guy. Uh, this is a polyfill, meaning it fixes it for other browsers. So that's the first step. So now this this animation frame will work in multiple browsers. And then here, this is only going to work for WebKit. Uh, we need it to work for all of them. So here's some code to do all of the browsers. So now this is going to work in all of the browsers. So this still works here. And if we open up in Firefox, this is Firefox Aurora, which is just their dev build. That's all I really have. Um, this, it works here too. And it works pretty well here too. So I'm, I'm really happy with it. Um, so now you can see you got it working in Firefox. So now let's talk about how this could be bad. So if we didn't use Transform 3D, let's say we wanted to use Margin Top. So we talked about this, and we talked about this. So what about margin top? So if we had said instead div.style.margintop equals scroll, if we had just done that, don't need any prefixes, any of that stuff, you're going to see it still works. But it's, I don't know if you can tell, but it's jumping. Let me show you the timeline. This is recording the animation. I'm going to start. As I scroll, watch what happens. So I'm going to scroll and notice all the green bars. The green bars that you see there are paints. That's the browser having to paint brand new to the screen. And that margin top is causing that to happen. And you can see that I'm getting I'm getting um, 30 frames per second, I'm getting you know less than that, and all these green bars. Green, bad. You never want green. So how do we get rid of the green bars? Well, if we use transform, we actually get rid of the green bars. So I'll check this out. So I'll put it back, and I'll record new frames. And now I'm going to scroll just the same, and you can see there are no green bars. I mean, there's, there's a couple tiny ones, but other than that, I mean, I'm staying at a, a pretty solid 60 frames per second through this entire animation. And that's because when we use the transforms, we're using the graphics card of my computer. Margin top doesn't. Margin top doesn't know how to do that. Margin top has to just be a re-render. So that's why we want to use a transform instead of margin top. And you can visually see the difference here uh, on the page. So I think that's all the details that I wanted to cover. So we talked about making it cross-browser compatible. We talked about optimizing inside of here. We talked about using the for loop, about variable caching. We talked about how margin top is bad. And we talked about bitwise functions. And we talked about the polyfill for animation frame. So I hope you learned a lot here. Um, sorry this ended up being a part two, 
but uh, I'm really glad we did this. I learned a lot for sure as well. So thanks for watching.